Read it silently as I read it aloud. It's a wonderful passage in Luke 2, 8 through 20. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Do not be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town, a Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in high, the heavenly heights, and peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The sheep herders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they had been told. If we had been one of those young men, I say young men because they ran there. (laughs) Middle-aged and senior adults would not run to the manger. But if we had been one of these young men, we would have been terrified too. Uh, This story reminded me, uh, one time we were at Fort Crowder and we were doing war games and they were really short of personnel, and we needed to get a perimeter defense. We needed to get a bunch of people or, to keep the bad guys from sneaking in on our positions. And so I volunteered to do that, even though I was a chaplain. And I laid down in this little valley, and somebody popped tear gas up above me. And uh, tear gas is heavier than air, so it just funneled down that valley, and I was laying down in the middle of that valley, and I suddenly felt my fingertips and my toes start to tingle from the tear gas, and I set up, and that took me out of the tear gas, but I was wide awake, and then I heard somebody approaching, so when they got within hailing distance, I said, halt, what's the password? And they didn't know it, and so I arrested him. It was an active duty major from Washington, D.C., and he said, I have never been arrested in a war game by a chaplain in the middle of the night on perimeter defense, but when when you're in total darkness, and there there was no light at Fort Crowder, and you hear something approach you, you wonder what it is, and the first thing I listened for was, is it fairly soft like a mountain lion? Is, is it kicking around like a deer walks? And finally I realized it was a two-legged creature coming towards me. And these shepherds, they had things sneak up on them in the night. My uncle in Wyoming, uh, he finally quit raising sheep. I said, Uncle Leo, why'd you do that? He said, you know what a sheep is, Ron? I said, no, what is it? And he said, a sheep is an animal looking for a place to die. <laughs> He had lost a lot of sheep that year, and he, he did. He got out of the sheep business, but uh, he was constantly guarding his sheep against bald eagles would come and catch a lot of the lambs, and uh, mountain lions and coyotes. He just constantly had to be guarding. So whenever he was with the sheep, he was on edge. These shepherds were on edge. And when that glory blazed around them, that the Bible talks about, they were terrified. And immediately, the angel said, do not be afraid. I've come to announce a great and joyful event. 
And this event is for everybody around the world. You know, one of the things that Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew about when he's going to come again, he says, the good news of God's love through my life will be preached around the world and then the second coming will come. The good news of Jesus has almost reached every corner of the world now. And we may not be too short from the second coming of Jesus. But this is a worldwide message. And really, through YouTube, this is going out around the world. There's people all over the world listening to this scripture today because uh, technical people in our church, Chase and, and Tim and John, have made it available around the world. But that's just a tiny bit of the word of Jesus that's going around the world. And this is just not some prophet we're talking about. The angel said, this is a savior. He's the Messiah that you have been waiting for for hundreds of years. This is the Messiah being born. This baby is going to be Messiah and Master. And what's really interesting is just like we had babies in our worship service today, a baby is very weak. And God will bring strength out of weakness. And if you're feeling weak today and powerless, if you turn your life to God, God will bring you strength for your weakness. And your weakness will be replaced with blessing and strength. And the angel told them what to look for. This baby is going to be wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. Not in a hotel room or motel room, not in a house. It's going to be in a manger. And then the angels begin singing God's praises. And there's two words in these praises I want you to look at. Glory to God in heavenly heights. So glory is one of the word. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. When you praise God and give God glory, you will have peace in your life. It's just like earlier we talked about when you pray for other people, you'll start having compassion on other people. You'll start loving other people and you'll start having compassion on yourself and loving on yourself as you pray and help other people. And so when you sing glory to God, the peace of God, when you really mean it with your heart, like these angels did and like these shepherds did, the peace of God will come to you and will remain on you as long as you're thanking God and giving praise to God. The peace of God will always be with you. Now, when we receive a message from God, the first thing we have to do is we have to see what it means in our lives. And the shepherd said, God has revealed something to us. Let's go do as fast as we can what the angel told us about. Let's go see for ourselves. Now, one of the things I want you to encourage you to do, if, if your faith in God is a little weak today, I want you to encourage you to see for yourself. I just talked with a person this morning and encouraged them to have morning devotions. If you have morning devotions every day and you take this bulletin and you pray for all the needs in your own life and for other people's, you will begin to see for yourself firsthand God began guiding your life in many, many different ways. So they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Mary was holding the baby. And it was exactly like the angels told them. They saw for themselves. The angels were telling the truth. They saw for themselves this baby was real flesh and blood exactly where the angels said he would be. There's a sort of a hidden sentence in this scripture. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Now remember, Israel's a small nation. Everybody around Bethlehem was impressed. 
And that word, they had relatives just like you and I have relatives in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. They had relatives. They told them about it. And their children, they told their children about it. And many of the people who became Christians, the first Christians, were people that the shepherders had told about this wonderful birth. And then they watched this child grow up, and they realized this was the Messiah. And they didn't quite understand it when he died on the cross, but when he rose from the grave, and 500 people saw him after he rose from the grave, they realized he was the Messiah. And I will guarantee you, when you go to heaven, these shepherders and their children and grandchildren who heard the story from eyewitness accounts, they're going to be in heaven with you and me. Because these, these sheep herders went out immediately. And what were they doing? They were doing exactly what the angels did. They were glorifying God and they were praising God. And there's another little secret in this passage. When the sheep herders began praising God and glorifying God and telling the message of Jesus' birth, the sheep herders themselves became angels. They became like angels. Don't you want to be like that? Don't you want to be praising God and glorifying God and seeing God work in your life, answers prayers, and you will become like an angel yourself? I know you got shortcomings. I know you have dark spots in your life. Don't let that stop you from praising God, from thanking God, from glorifying God, and sharing the message of Jesus with other people. If you wait till you're perfect to share this message, you're never going to do it. Those sheep herders didn't say, well, let me begin a two-week period of fasting and a study of the scripture, and then I'll go tell other people. No, 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 no. They ran from taking care of the sheep. Have you ever been around a shepherd? They've been holding sheep in their arms. Many times they haven't had a chance to take a bath in a while. You can smell them coming. <laughs> they didn't even take a bath. They didn't change their clothes. They ran directly from the sheep to tell everybody they knew. Angels have appeared to us. The Messiah has been born. An angel told us it was the Messiah. And they were excited. And, and you know, that's how people become Christians. Not by dry pressure talk. People become Christians when you get excited and you start talking about answers to prayer in your life and how God has guided you. Be glorifying and praising God just like these shepherds. And the last sentence in this scripture, it, it turned out exactly the way it had been told. Where did we hear this about this last week? It turned out exactly like the wise men had been told. We studied the wise men last week. They followed the star. They went directly to Jesus. It was exactly like they'd been told. When, when God speaks to you about something and guides your life, you'll become an eyewitness. It'll be exactly like you were told, and your joy will know no bounds. At first, I'm sure Joseph and Mary were a little confused, you know. First, the, the sheep herders show up and praise God and tell them about the angel. And then, sometime later, the three wise men show up and say they've seen his star in the east, they realize he's the Messiah, and they give them gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But both Mary and Joseph had talked with each other, and they began to put it together, and that's how it'll be with your life, too. You will gradually put this stuff together. It'll take a lifetime to even get close to understanding how God has guided your life. But God will guide your life. You will always be led. You will never be alone if all you do is say, God, I'm not perfect, but I want to be like those shepherds. God, I'm not perfect. Make me wise like those wise men. God, I'm not perfect, but make me be like Joseph and Mary who as human beings still raised the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And always remember, when you're feeling weak, Jesus was weak too. 
He grew up as a teenager. Teenagers have all kinds of things going on emotionally. He understands you. He loves you. He was a human being. God was a human being. He knows everything you're going through. And he loves you. And he'll never leave you. And he will never forsake you. What a wonderful Christmas message, this baby, huh? And we haven't even touched the depths of what this baby really is like. We haven't even touched the depths of what Jesus the Messiah is like. But I know you want to or you wouldn't be here on Christmas Sunday. I know you wouldn't be listening if you didn't want to have Jesus take over your life and to become like an angel because you're glorifying God and you're praising God every day like these shepherds did. And I believe they did this until the day they died. This was a life-changing event for these shepherds. How can you forget a choir of angels praising God? How can you forget a baby in a manger? How can you forget watching him grow up to be the Messiah and heal people and speak like no other human being has ever spoken in the history of the world? I challenge you, read all the writings and all the teachers of all the world. You'll never find a man or a woman who spoke like Jesus of Nazareth. You'll never find one. I was on a spiritual quest for many, many years, reading all the world religions, all the original documents. No one, no, and nothing compares to Jesus. And what a joy this Christmas day. You'll be risen from the dead before you die, when you become a follower of Jesus. You'll be risen with great joy from depression and struggles when you know that you're a child of the living God and that God personally loves you.